the Tokaido Shinkansen operates between Tokyo and Shinosaka Station 350 times a day. Running at a maximum speed of 285 kilometers an hour, it takes just 2 hours 22 minutes to make the journey. In today's program, we introduce the backbone of Shinkansen operations, such as the multi-purpose inspection train, detailed car examinations, and maintenance work that's performed every single night. World-class maintenance that ensures the Shinkansen is always safe and reliable. Welcome to Japan Railway Journal. I'm Russell Tom. Today we're in Mishima City in Shizuoka Prefecture at JR Central's General Education Center. And right now we're in the General Training Simulator Room. Joining us as always is Dr. Ryo Takagi of Kogakuen University to share his expert opinion. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Yeah. And you know, behind us we see this uh, full-scale uh, vehicle of uh, N700 series Shinkansen train. And this is used for uh, training drivers conductors and maintenance workers uh, in their uh, practical training. Mm. And our special guest today is professional photographer Naomi Yano. How are you now? Hi, I'm great. I'm excited to be here today. <laughs> well, today's program is all about the backbone of the Tokaido Shinkansen, and that's the maintenance work. It's been 52 years since the Tokaido Shinkansen opened, and when it did, it took around four hours to travel from Tokyo to Shinosaka Station. But I think around now it takes two hours, 20 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. It's really an amazing line, and it's, it's now carried five and a half billion people, which is unbelievable. Yes, it is. And also, during that 52 years, there was no fatal accidents. And that's also amazing. And even more amazing is the fact that the level of delays is so low. Mm. And the figure from year 2015 uh, is that um, uh, the average delay uh, of the Shinkansen train uh, was only 0.2 minutes or 12 seconds. And that uh, low uh, level of delay is actually supported by the extensive maintenance work. Mm. Well, speaking of the maintenance work, mm -hmm. which is what we're here for today, let's take a look at the maintenance management of the Shinkansen rolling stock. Mm -hmm. So the inspection of the Shinkansen is carried out in mainly four parts. Mm -hmm. Firstly, there's the pre-service inspection, which is carried out every 48 hours. And a general test of the cars are done, and they also conduct a hammering test. Then the next one is the regular inspection service, which is carried out every 45 days or 60,000 kilometers. And then next here we have the bogey inspection. This is carried out every 18 months or within 600,000 kilometers. And then finally, they do a general overhaul. And this is carried out every 36 months or within 1.2 million kilometers. Um, this, these are the uh, scheduled maintenance mm. or inspection. And there are unscheduled ones uh, that will happen uh, depending on the condition of the train or uh, other uh, some sort of requests uh, arise, then uh, that sort of unscheduled maintenance will, uh, should be taking place. Wow, so mm. not just these four. Mm. Mm. Well, first, let's take a look at what happens in the general overhaul. This is the Central Japan Railway Company's Hamamatsu Workshop, where all 106 of their 16-car train sets are serviced and maintained. First, the car body of the Shinkansen is separated from the bogies. The car body is then placed onto temporary bogies and the switch boxes and other components are removed from underneath. The actual bogies are placed on a special mount and then disassembled. Depending on which part is being examined, every single bolt may be removed and inspected. The condition of the axle on each wheel set is essential for safe running. A special camera is used to check for any defects or cracks due to metal fatigue. Also, the wheels themselves don't wear evenly. If one area on the wheel is too uneven, creating what's known as a flat, the comfort of the ride is affected. So, a lathe is used to reshape the wheel to a smooth, even diameter.
pantographs are inspected to ensure that there's sufficient pressure to maintain contact with the overhead wires and that the supply of electricity is normal. The electric components and communication devices are also examined one by one to check for any soldering defects. Every device is tested to verify it's working properly. During the inspection, the car body is completely repainted and restored to its beautiful best. Once the inspection is complete, any worn out parts and defective components are replaced and then the whole car is reassembled. It takes about 15 days to do a general overhaul on one 16 car train set and then it's put back into service. Because the Shinkansen runs very fast, mm. uh, the wear and tear of the components will be very fast and eventually without maintenance uh, those cars will not be able to perform uh, its designed performance. Mm. So by regular maintenance uh, they maintain the condition of the cars to the highest level mm. so that uh, they can provide passengers safe, reliable and comfortable ride. Mm. Speaking of safety then, we're actually very lucky today because we get to try the hammering test, which mm. is part of the pre-service inspection, and we're going to try it on this pantograph mm. here. I've got my hard hat, protective glasses, and gloves ready. I'm ready to learn the hammering test. Mr. Kamata, could you explain the test, please? You use this testing hammer to hit the bolts and listen for any difference in sound. I'm going to hit these two bolts here. You can hear that this sound is a bit higher. This means the bolt is properly tightened. But the sound for this one is lower, which means the bolt is loose. You can hear the difference. Can you tell the difference even if I do it? Of course, people usually can't do this unless they have experience in proper training. But you can give it a try and you'll hear the difference. Uh, let me try. The sounds really are different. These days inspections are usually done with modern technology, but for this kind of test it's really important for operators to see and hear the difference for themselves. Yes, the final inspection is important and should be done by a trained operator, not a machine. Well, actually, um, this particular example should, should have been very easy to spot, but um, the job of the inspector should be very hard because uh, he or she has to pay uh, very close attention to all the noise that comes from the hammering. Mm. Mm. Well, next, let's take a look at how the Shinkansen is cleaned, both on the outside and, more importantly, on the inside for the passengers. Mm. All Shinkansen are cleaned at the end of each service, but thorough cleaning is also done at the rolling stock centers every day. When Shinkansen come back to the center, they're put through a car wash, which has large brushes to remove any stains on the sides and roof. Each face of the Shinkansen at either end of the train, cars 1 and 16, has a complicated shape, meaning they get more dirty than the rest of the train. So, they're cleaned very carefully by hand with long brushes. When a Shinkansen stops at its final station, staff have only around 10 minutes to clean the inside. So here at the rolling stock center, the windows are wiped and the floors are thoroughly cleaned. This broom, which is used to clean the seats, is called a magic broom by the employees. If any moisture is detected, the seat is quickly changed. For passengers to really enjoy their ride, all Shinkansen are given a thorough cleaning every single day. Mm -hmm. 
Well, that uh, magic brooms thing that uh, we have seen in the video mm. was the idea of one employee uh, that was uh, dealing with the uh, maintenance work every day. And that sort of um, using up uh, the employee's idea is, uh, uh, is actually the main part of the uh, famous Kaizen activities in the Japanese uh, quality control system. And that is actually uh, heavily used in Shinkansen maintenance as well. Railway Topics On August 17th in Toyohashi City, Aichi Prefecture, an event was held where elementary school students could experience really driving a train. The Toyohashi Railroad organized the event so children could enjoy this rare opportunity during their summer vacation. Thirteen elementary school children took part in this year's event. They were a little nervous at the beginning, but soon enjoyed being in the driver's seat and cruising along at a leisurely pace of 10 kilometers per hour. From August 19th to 21st, one of Japan's biggest model railroad events, the International Model Railroad Convention, was held at Tokyo Big Site. The purpose of the convention is to help more people discover the fun in model railroads, and this year marks its 17th anniversary. The hill climbing contest is one of the most popular events, and visitors were surprised to witness a new record. 15,000 people visited during the three days, and model railroad fans and families alike thoroughly enjoyed this year's convention. So now we're here at the General Education Center's Shinkansen training track, which is 220 meters long and is equipped with all the facilities of an actual line in service, correct? Yes, that's right. For example, you can find that overhead line equipment, which is exactly the same as the one we can find on the real track. Mm. And here the hands-on training can be done. So now let's take a look at track and overhead line maintenance. And I've heard there's a unique and special Shinkansen called Dr. Yellow, which is a multi-purpose inspection train, is that right? So mm. Dr. Yellow is officially known as a multi-purpose inspection train. It operates every 10 days, running on actual service routes to check the condition of the track and electrical facilities. Since Dr. Yellow's schedule is not made public, it's hard to see and so extremely popular with rail fans. So cool! I've never seen it this close! Today, Dr. Yellow will be inspecting the 552.6 kilometers of track between Shinosaka and Tokyo Station. Wow! I imagined the interior would be full of machines and instruments, but it looks exactly like a regular Shinkansen. This is car number seven, the lead car now. It's a meeting room for operators and workers. I see. So that's what this car is for. Oh, there's something on the monitor. What is it displaying right now? There's a camera mounted on the front car. This monitor shows us what the camera is seeing. It's actually taking measurements right now. It's measuring the vibration of the car. The test train runs at the same speed as a regular Shinkansen and checks how it moves. What's this car for? This is car number six. Electrical and signal communication systems are monitored from here. Actually, 
Just above us, there's a pantograph used for inspection. So there's a pantograph up here. What's the role of this car? This is car number five. That's an observation dome. From there, you can see the inspection pantograph and overhead contact wires. Let's take a peek. Oh, what a great view! I can see the pantograph. I'm really surprised to see it from this angle. Is someone usually here to observe the pantograph? Actually, the pantograph is monitored by a camera, so an operator doesn't have to stay here all the time. When an issue does arise, an operator can come and check with their own eyes. I see. So everything is double checked. The contact wire is extremely important as it supplies all the electricity for the train. Since the pantograph is in contact with the wire every day, the wire gradually wears down and the diameter becomes smaller. Dr. Yellow inspects the friction status of the wire using a laser. Do the contact wires wear down pretty fast? These are two contact wires. This one is new. As you can see, this wire is used and worn down. Some wires last only a year, but depending on the area, some can last up to ten years. What kind of measurements are taken here? This is car number four, where they monitor the condition of the track. There are devices installed on the track inspection bogey that measure any displacement of the track. For example, a laser can detect if there has been any lateral movement of the rail down to a single millimeter. What happens if you find any problems? If any abnormalities are detected, we contact the relevant division and make sure the problem is fixed right away. There's also an observation dome here in car number three. We need two observation domes on this train because depending on the direction we are traveling in, the pantograph used for observation is different. The rear one is used for power supply, while the forward one is used for inspection. What kind of inspection is done here? In car number one, there is a central console displaying power usage data. As it is measured by the train, operators monitor this numeric data and waveforms. If any abnormality is detected, the relevant department is contacted immediately. Accurately measuring all this data and analyzing it will lead to safe and reliable Shinkansen operation. We will continue on to do our best now and in the future. Detecting problems with the track and overhead lines quickly is extremely important, and Dr. Yellow really does play a key role. I see. So the Yellow Shinkansen really is like a doctor for Shinkansen, performing checkups, and so it's called Dr. Yellow. But why is it yellow? Do you know? それはですね、日本では昔から保線検査用の車両は夜間でも目立つように黄色で統一されていました。なので検査用のこの車両も黄色になったそうです。Well,、um, ever since the inauguration of the Shinkansen, the、uh, updating effort、uh, for the maintenance regime has continued for improved、uh, reliability and safety of the Shinkansen operation.、Mm. And Dr. Yellow.、Uh, Definitely is in the center of the of that effort.、Mm, I think so, because actually all of the data that's measured by Dr. Yellow is quickly analyzed and applied to maintenance management. So all the maintenance that's done on overhead lines, the rails, and ballast changing is all done during the night. So first, let's take a look at the process of changing the overhead lines. The data collected by Dr. Yellow is used to help manage maintenance work, which is done during the night. Any necessary work needs to be completed within the few short hours between the last train and first train the next morning. Here, the contact wires are being replaced. 
the overhead maintenance vehicle leaves the old contact wires in place while the new wires are hung onto the line. The old contact wires are then removed from the hanger and the new wires are secured. The hangers are spaced at 5 meter intervals, so replacing the wires is a gradual process. Finally, the old contact wires are taken down. This vehicle moves in the opposite direction as the vehicle replacing the contact wires and winds the old wires onto a drum. Ballast plays an important role to support the track. Because of the vibrations caused when trains pass by, the stones become rounded like this. Replacing the ballast is necessary to ensure sections of the track don't slant or sink. First, workers dig a 5 meter long trench beside the track. Next, a ballast exchanger is brought in. The undercutter bar at the front is lowered to dig underneath the track and scrape out the old ballast. The old ballast is then collected and moved out of the way. Then, new ballast is moved from the back of the ballast exchanger by conveyor belt to the front where it's deposited into place. Next, a ballast tamper is moved into position. These claw-like devices drive down into the newly laid ballast to help it settle. At the same time, the track is raised and lowered to make sure it's correctly aligned. Finally, the dynamic track stabilizer is moved into place. It runs along the section of the line, sending strong vibrations through the rails to ensure there's no loose ballast and that the track is securely in place. For high-speed Shinkansen lines, long rails are used. Long rails help minimize vibration and also have the advantage of reducing wear and tear and extending the life of the track. The world's longest manufactured rail is 150 meters in length and these are transported by rail train to be welded on site. How much rail can be replaced differs depending on the area it's in, but usually a section of 700 to 800 meters can be replaced in just one night. First, the rails which need to be replaced are cut. Next, the bolts of the rail fasteners are loosened and the sleepers are removed from the old rail. Then, a rail replacer is used to change the old and new rails. Although rails are made of steel, they're thin and long and so are very flexible, as you can see here. When replacing rails, the new rail is placed on the outer side and gradually pushed inwards, while at the same time the old rail is pushed outward and the machine moves forward. Next, the new and old rails must be welded together. This method is called gas pressure welding. First, the ends of each rail are heated to a very high temperature. Then, an extreme pressure is applied to force the rails together. This pressure makes the atoms in the new and old rail bond, forging the rails together. Then, the workers put the most time and care into grinding the new weld and the area around it. When a train runs over a new weld, any uneven areas will affect the comfort of the ride and could damage the rails or the wheels. So grinding is necessary to blend in the weld so the rail is as smooth as possible. The straight edge tolerance for the running surface is just 0.1 millimeters, while the side is 0.3. 
the rails are repeatedly inspected until they are as close to perfectly straight as possible. After grinding, magnetic particles are sprayed around the weld and then a UV light or black light is used to inspect for any damage or cracks. Finally, a special measure is used to check that the width of the rails is correct. The width must be within plus or minus two millimeters of the precise track gauge. If there is any displacement, the sleeper bolts are loosened, the rail is barred to adjust its position, and then the width is rechecked. This procedure must be repeated all along the newly laid section of track to ensure it's safely within tolerance. Track maintenance work like this is carried out every single night. The quality of maintenance work depends on the skills and techniques of the workers. These techniques have been developed over time and passed down to our staff today, who are constantly striving to improve on them. We know that challenging ourselves and aiming higher is important, and this has led to the safe and reliable transportation that we enjoy today.私東海道新幹線をよく利用するんですけれどもレールのつなぎ目の振動とかほとんど感じられなくてすごく快適に乗ってるんですねそのためにはああやって0 well, um, the reason why Shinkansen has been safe and will be safe in the future uh, is that uh, Shinkansen maintenance re regime is actually introducing many new technologies and do, I do hope that this will continue in the future uh, to maintain the reputation and, uh, for the Shinkansen as the Japan's pride. Mm, pride of Japan. <laughs> yes. Well, that's all we have time for. We hope you enjoyed the program. So, from all of us here, we look forward to seeing you on the next Japan Railway Journal. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.